In one of the majestic palaces, the human king knelt before the vampire king, but he made no attempt to hide his former arrogance. Begging for mercy, the king of people said that he was giving his throne, land and everything else to the vampires, holding out his crown into his hands. The war between humans and vampires, as expected, ended with the victory of the vampires, and the vampire king cut off the head of the human king with a movement of his hand. Humans, as a weak species, will live under their control like cattle, and the vampire king, with blood on his hand, said that humans have no place here and must die. This ushered in a glorious era of vampires that was to last forever, and piles of human corpses lay all over the world like they were worthless trash. Among one of these mountains, two fighting vampires were about to finish off a group of people, and one of them told the other that it was all over quickly, because there weren't very many people here. The second vampire did not respond to the statement of the first, but told the people in front of him not to be afraid of death, because pain for them is temporary. The girl, standing in a group of children behind two adults, told the vampire that his days were numbered, because in her dream she saw how God would send a hero to save people. The first vampire asked not to make him laugh, but the second answered the girl, preparing for battle, that she should not worry, because she would not see tomorrow. The two adults prepared to attack, and the second vampire rushed at them, dodging the man's attack before cutting him in two with a swift movement. The man died instantly, and at that second the girl rushed at the vampire, uttering a battle cry, but she was immediately cut in two by the same movement. The vampire approached the second man, piercing him right through with his sword, but a third warrior suddenly swung at him from the side, preparing to win the battle. The vampire did not have time to dodge the unexpected attack, but caught the warrior's sword with his hand, and, as if it were a feather, he broke it, cutting the man just like the others. The children were left defenseless, and the vampire approached them, saying that he would give them a painless death, after which he raised his sword over his head and focused his gaze on them. But at that moment they were interrupted by a man in armor who suddenly appeared from the smoke forcing both vampires to turn their attention to him. The first asked the knight who he was, but the second replied that this knight did not smell like a person at all, and added that he was sure that the knight in front of them was a corpse. This knight, smelling like a corpse, began to move towards them, and in an instant he found himself in front of the first vampire, raising his fist under his face, and he managed to say that only the fearless will attack vampires. The attack hit the target, and the second vampire stood in shock, because he saw all this, and also the fact that the distance between the marks from the knight's jump was more than ten meters. The corpse knight killed the first vampire, destroying his heart, and rose to his feet. But the second vampire had already moved to attack, because he realized that he had a dangerous opponent in front of him. The second vampire attacked the knight, thrusting his sword into the place where the heart should be. But he did not move, and the vampire thought, because the knight had to die. The knight grabbed the vampire by the head, and he could not do anything, but said that he should have died and not moved, because he had hit his heart. The knight ignored the words of the last of the vampires in this place, and struck him, passing through his hand, destroying his heart, and the children who remained alive called him a hero. The second vampire disappeared, and the knight turned to the children, saying that they should head to the temple, located five kilometers ahead, but the girl again called him a hero. The girl stood up, delighted, and shouted to the knight that he was the hero whom she had seen in a dream, that God had sent him to them in order to save them, and the other children were also happy. The knight suddenly became serious, and suddenly took off his mask, asking them if he was still the same hero for them, revealing to them his terrible face, as if it was the face of a corpse. When the knight took off his mask, his nose fell off, and at that moment the children screamed in fear that he was a monster, after which they ran away from him in different directions. There is a strange rumor in this world that talks about a vampire fighter fighting alone, the only knight who is not capable of dying at the hands of vampires. Some time ago from these events, in the destroyed underground floor of a building, two people in plague masks said that things were going well. They met two other masked men who were examining a corpse called Gunther, a man who had apparently died fighting. One of the masked men said that this was definitely Gunther, the greatest gladiator of this time, without a single defeat and 228 victories behind him. The second person said that Gunther had the best body for killing vampires, and the third asked how long ago they started betting their future on a guy they don't even know. The fourth masked man said that he should just trust Gunther, 
and the first asked what the condition of the corpse was learning that the decomposition of the flesh was still tolerable at the moment thinking it was time to start the man took off his mask and now the girl in the plague doctor costume told gunther that in desperate times the hero would live forever at that second in gunther's head he stood in the middle of a mountain of corpses of people he had killed covered in blood and with his eyes downcast expecting that this was his end someone told him that he had done a good job surviving this time too and he immediately opened his eyes but his eyes did not feel the same as before the people no longer wearing masks standing in front of him exclaimed with joy saying that the experiment was a success and he woke up but the first thing gunther said was that he was definitely dead the girl standing in front of him said that it was true but he was resurrected to save humanity and the man asked to bring a mirror when gunther looked at himself in the mirror his mouth moved slowly saying that in front of him was a monster hanging on chains without arms and legs with the body of a corpse the girl repeated that he was the last hope of humanity and the man said that gunther had a life-sustaining device implanted in his brain and in front of him was his creator the man said that as long as gunther had this device in his head he would not be able to die even if his body was completely destroyed the girl explained to him that he could use a modified body and limbs that contained artificially made muscles they were ten times more powerful than those of ordinary people and people came to the conclusion that gunther with such strength would be able to fight high levels and vampires gunther said that he was made into a revived hero to fight vampires but the girl replied that he was the most suitable candidate because he had lost a lot because of them the girl although pale and weak confidently shouted to gunther that she was asking him to fight for the good of humanity for the sake of its salvation against vampires gunther said that being a hero was cool but he had one condition and asked the man to come closer and he said that if gunther agreed they would do anything gunther grabbed the man's head with his thighs and said that his condition was that they get him out of there and stop talking in vain this man the creator of the device was named reino and gunther asked the people how they thought he became the best warrior but he himself answered by saying that he killed people without hesitation he said that vampires are disgusting but humans are no better just as narrow-minded and selfish and he is ashamed of being hung up and forced to fight for humanity saying that all that mattered to him was his life gunther ordered them to reattach his limbs and let him go unless they wanted rhino to lose his head while rhino was thinking about his life the girl standing next to him looked at all this with fear but suddenly she took out her watch surprising gunther gunther asked why she did this and the girl replied that he had little time left or rather the time that he had left to be alive in this body while the girl was counting down four seconds gunther tried to understand what was about to happen and after the time was up an incredible pain pierced his head after some time gunther opened his eyes again feeling life in the same monster body while hearing the voices of people saying that he was dangerous rhino asked gunther if he was awake and said that his jaw still hurt so he had better not get violent but gunther said he didn't understand answering gunther's question why he was here rhino said that everything that moves be it a car or an animal needs energy to move having said that the energy that moves gunther's body is the life force of a person and a tube was attached to gunther that transmitted the girl's life energy the girl disconnected the tube and said that they were connected through this device that transferred life energy to gunther to move she explained that when the connection is broken gunther will not be able to move and the charge of such energy will only be enough for two hours of battle gunther sputtering with saliva screamed with dissatisfaction at such a short period of time and rhino said that this was the reaction he was waiting for because everything sounded too implausible rhino said that they were working on this to save humanity and people with implanted devices like arian s are called feeder beings rhino said that among the many volunteers who were implanted with the same feeding devices only arian managed to survive rhino added that it is now difficult to create the same device so arian will apparently be the only fueling creature he said that gunther only cared about his life but without arian he would only be able to survive for two hours after which he would die again rhino gave gunther a choice between dying two hours later in this underground building or fighting the vampires while protecting arian gunther was lost in thought but suddenly a masked man ran into the room and told rhino who was in the midst of a dialogue that vampires were approaching however the masked man did not have time to finish and was killed by a vampire 
who came with a friend and said that Mr. Bengal had ordered all the beautiful people and jewelry to be taken away, saying that he thought there was a big catch waiting for them here. The vampire laughed along with the other vampire, while Rhino, Arian and Gunther were in shock. Rhino cursed and said that he did not expect to see the remaining vampires here, and the masked man, his subordinate, asked him what to do next. Gunther screamed for his arms and legs to be attached instead of standing still and Rhino realized that they now had a new weapon against the vampires, Gunther. Rhino asked Patrick and Al to buy him time while he dealt with Gunther, but they said that this order would send them to certain death. Rhino said that if he died, then they would not be able to do anything, and shouted at them, telling them to follow his orders, because he himself was afraid of dying. Patrick replied that there were only four of them here, and why should they carry out this order? because they all also did not want to go into battle with vampires to certain death. Arian, listening to this conversation, loaded the crossbow and said that she would gain time, so they should start attaching Gunther's limbs. Rhino said that she shouldn't go, and at that moment Gunther, who saw this, shouted at her, saying that if she died, then he would die too. Arian stood in the way of the vampires, and one of them was surprised that Arian was not afraid to be left alone in battle with them and the second added that she had completely lost her fear. The first vampire, with an ugly face, said that they were superior to this girl in everything, but suddenly an arrow flew at him, threatening to hit him right in the forehead. Arian told them that they were chatting a lot, but the first vampire, at whom the arrow flew, caught it with his hand and cursed, angry at the girl. The vampire rushed to attack her, but Arian had already managed to reload the crossbow and shot at him but then dodged and approached her. The vampire dodged another arrow fired by Arian, then kicked her, throwing her into the wall, and pinned her against the wall, grabbing her by the neck. The vampire suddenly looked at the girl and told Arian that she had a rather beautiful face, and Mr. Bengal might like her. The second vampire, standing nearby, told the first that he himself wanted to drag her to Mr. Bengal, but the first refused to give the girl to him. The second objected again, saying that he brought two people last time, and an argument began between the two vampires over who would bring the girl Bengela. However, at that moment, the vampires heard a question about what they were doing, and Gunther suddenly flew into the first vampire's head, sending both vampires into the wall. Arian was delighted to see him, but Gunther, to her surprise, grabbed her by the face and said that she was completely crazy, since she brought him here, then she should take care of her safety. Gunther squeezed her, squeezing her cheeks with his hand, and Arian told him that she went into battle with the vampires because someone needed to distract them. At that moment, Gunther heard something behind him say that she was mine, and two vampires who had been thrown into the wall stood on top of him, beginning to regenerate their heads. Gunther did not understand why the vampires were alive, because he pierced their heads, and Arian said that their hearts must be destroyed otherwise they will regenerate. The first vampire said that she belonged to him and rushed to attack Gunther with great speed, so Gunther threw Arian into Rhino. Because of such enormous speed, Gunther did not have time to defend himself from the blow, and the vampire stuck his fingers with long nails into him, but he did not budge. Gunther again pierced the head of the first with one blow, but the second vampire rushed to Arian, saying that now she would become his gift to Mr. Bengal. However, at that second Gunther rushed at the second vampire, also piercing his head, protecting Arian and Rhino, who were standing in that place. Rhino told Gunther in surprise that this was surprising, because he was using his body for the first time, but was already superior to vampires in strength and speed. Arian, looking at him, realized that this was not just superior strength due to the new body because his movements were slowed down to the level of an ordinary person. Arian knew that Gunther himself understood this weakness of his, so he used his unique strategy in battle with them, but for some reason did not touch their hearts. Sweat began to run down her face as she realized that the guy in front of her, named Gunther, was now simply enjoying the carnage without killing his opponents. Gunther pressed the first vampire to the wall, saying that he understood how to use this body, but he shouted in response that the humans had created a monster. Gunther listened to him and said that this was too weak for his last word before death, and swung to strike. But the vampire stopped him, telling him to wait. The vampire, not wanting to die, shouted that he had a proposal for Nair, and first he should listen to him, because he would like the proposal. The first vampire said that the blood of Mr. Bengal flows in him, so he feels that now he is somewhere nearby, and if you kill him, 
he will rush here in less than an hour. The vampire added that if Mr. Bengal came here to take revenge, then Gunther would not stand against him for more than one minute, threatening him. Gunther asked why Bengal would take revenge for them, and the vampire shouted that he loved them all. In the whole world only Mr. Bengal loved people like them. The vampire said that he would agree to leave them if Gunther gave them a girl named Arian, because Mr. Bengal would like her beautiful face. Gunther said that he could only give the bald rhino, but the vampire replied that he was a freak, and Gunther decided not to think and pierced his hand right through the vampire's heart. The vampire disappeared and Gunther said that this was the end of their stupid negotiations, after which he also killed the second vampire destroying his heart. Gunther asked who Bengal was, whom the vampires worshipped, and Arian said that he was a high vampire. But Gunther replied that he had never heard of such. Arian said that in this world there are three types of vampires, pure bloods who have been vampires since birth, higher vampires, and lower vampires. Higher vampires are those who were turned by receiving the blood of a pure blood, and lower vampires were turned by the blood of higher ones, and each is inferior to the other type in strength. As it turned out, those two were lower vampires, and higher vampires are vulnerable to the sun, so they use blood to create unique military weapons. Arian said that there are rumors that the higher vampires are so powerful that the human brain is simply not able to comprehend it. Rhino interrupted them, saying that the two of them were busy with the wrong things, because the vampires said that Bendel would come for revenge on them, and in less than an hour. Gunther asked if they should trust him, and Rhino said that it would be better to prepare in advance because they would not have enough time to find shelter. But Arian interrupted their dialogue, turning to Gunther, and said that they needed to know whether he would fight against the vampires, because they had not yet heard his consent. Gunther thought about it and said that, according to his previous words, for him there is nothing more important than his own life, his salvation and well-being. He continued that now he has no other options to save his life except to cooperate with them and said that now he agrees to their terms. Arian thanked him for his choice, which would bring salvation to humanity, and Gunther asked him to recharge it before it was too late, because it would last for less than two hours. Rhino, who was standing nearby, was delighted, but suddenly remembered and told Gunther that he had a gift for him, and Gunther dressed in a full set of armor. Rhino said it looked cool, and he assembled this armor from several parts so Gunther looks like a prehistoric corpse knight. Rhino asked how he felt about the armor, but Gunther, looking at himself in the mirror and remembering his battles during his life, said that he looked like he was a hillbilly. Arian told him that the armor had chainmail attached to it, made by refining mithril, and this made it easier to attach his limbs. Arian added that he is stronger than vampires, but inferior to them in speed, so he will take a lot of hits and this armor minimizes the damage. Arian drew his attention to his wrist, where there was an indicator showing the remaining energy for the movement of Gunther's body, and asked him to keep an eye on it. Gunther looked at the indicator and realized that the red line would decrease along with the energy, and clarified that he only had about two hours to fight. Arian confirmed this, but suddenly everyone looked up, hearing a strong knock higher than the ceiling, and they tried to understand what they heard. They heard this sound more and more often, and Gunther said that something huge was breaking through to them, breaking the walls and ceilings of the floors above them. Rhino wondered if it was Bengal, and suddenly realized that only forty minutes had passed since they killed those two lesser vampires. Gunther shouted to break the charging connection and asked them if there was a place they could retreat to before Bengal broke through. Arian told him that these were hastily restored catacombs of his own city, so both the entrance and exit were the same door. As the knocking grew louder and closer, Gunther cursed telling Arian that she should have reported this earlier, and she apologized to him. Gunther put on his helmet and walked towards the entrance, telling Arian to stand behind him and not get into trouble, and Rhino asked to protect him too. The knocking became even stronger, but suddenly died down, and from the passage where the exit door was, three vampire heads appeared, and one of them stared at the people, smiling. None of the people understood what was happening and the heads asked one by one if they had killed two members of his family who had come here recently. Gunther came forward and told Bendel that if he was talking about two lower vampires, then he personally cut them down, killing them with one blow, and he was sincerely surprised. The Bengal had said it was impressive, but even their parents didn't like them for their looks, and they tried to kill Gunther and the others, and they just defended themselves. Bendel asked to forgive him for this this time, and Gunther said that he did not believe that it was Bengal 
or that the bolt in his head had come loose. Rhino came forward and asked the vampire if he was a collector working for Bengal, and he replied that it was true, and he was. Rhino said that he was sorry that they killed his family members, but clarified that the vampires started killing them first, so they are now even. He hesitantly said that since Bengal was behaving rationally, then they should all put aside their emotions, and Rhino suggested that everyone go their own way. Bengal said about himself in the plural is that dawn is coming, so he can't do that, otherwise he would have thought about it. He added that they also swore to Mr. Julius that they would kill all the people in this rotten world, no matter what, so he couldn't just leave. One of Rhino's subordinates cursed, and Gunther said that it was expected, so he asked Bengal if they would be okay without their family members. Getting serious, Gunther told Bengal that they were too arrogant if they thought they could kill him on their own, surprising Bengal. Bengal laughed and began moving more heads out of the entrance to the catacombs, saying that Gunther was ridiculous for forgetting what lower vampires are for. He said that the lower ones were needed to protect the higher ones during the day and morning while the sun was shining, but in the morning and during the day the situation changes. Bengal revealed dozens and hundreds of vampire heads and said that as long as the sun does not shine, no one in this world is capable of killing the highest vampire. Looking at these hundreds of heads, Gunther did not believe that it was a vampire, because all these faces seemed to be torn from the bodies and glued together with blood. Arian said that that is why he is called a collector of faces, and if you get to the heart of this vampire, you will be able to defeat him. But at that moment Bengal attacked her. At that moment, towards where Arian and Gunther stood, Bengal sent a mass of hundreds of heads with faces in order to kill them with one blow and created a large hole with his attack. Gunther managed to save himself and Arian, and when they jumped to a safe distance, Gunther cursed, saying that that vampire was faster and stronger than he thought. Gunther told Arian, who was glad that she was saved, so that she would not get caught by Bengal and find a safe place. But she replied that it was difficult to fight him. Bengal if you don't know where his body is. But Gunther told her not to worry and take care of herself, which surprised her. At this moment, while the two were communicating, the mass of Collector Bengal's heads was about to eat Rhino's subordinate, and he could only scream in fear. Just as Bengal was about to attack the masked man, Gunther flew into the mass of heads with his fist, breaking part of his body and interrupting the vampire's attack. Gunther did not wait for thanks for the rescue and realized that his strength was enough for the battle, so he again hit the mass of Bengal's heads destroying a piece of the vampire's body. Gunther said that if he didn't know where the vampire's real body was, he would simply get rid of all of its parts, and he fiercely charged into battle with him again. At that moment, Reino, hiding behind the boxes, said that Gunther had gone crazy, deciding that he could fight the higher vampire on an equal footing, because he couldn't win like that. Smashing dozens of heads over and over again, Gunther fought, and Bendel said that his strength was impressive because among people there was no owner of such strength. Bengal asked him if he was a human at all, and Gunther replied that this knowledge would not give anything to a vampire, and hit the mass on the head with even greater force and fury. But suddenly the vampire laughed, and Gunther noticed that his hand landed right in the mouth of one of the heads of the vampire's body, and he said that he had finally fallen into the trap. Heads and faces said one after another that their teeth were more powerful than his strength and the fact that he grabbed Gunther meant that he would no longer be able to escape. Gunther did not respond to Bengal's words and decided to swing his second, free hand, but it was immediately grabbed by the second mass of Bengal's heads with its teeth. A second later, Gunther was already restrained by Bengal's heads in all limbs, and the vampire told him that he would now show him something special. The heads completely surrounded Gunther, transporting him into the inside of the vampire's body and they began to say at once that there was a real hell inside this place. One day, in a deserted place, forgotten by people, where there were mountains of broken buildings and cars, heaps of corpses and bodies, a child's cry was heard. Apparently, this cry was a cry of longing for the maternal warmth that had left him. This cry was not heard by anyone, but suddenly the child suddenly stopped crying. His crying was cut short because the child saw someone in the middle of this wasteland, but the one he saw was not the parent who extended a helping hand. This was not someone who has a kind heart and is ready to help, but someone who has great strength and uses it to survive in this rotten world. At this moment, Gunther was sandwiched among the heads and faces of Bengal, thinking that the force of his bite was incredibly enormous, because he could not even move. Gunther realized that he was in a bad position and decided to look for a way out 
Discarding the options of going to the sides and up, he decided to minimize contact with faces and go down. However, he had no idea how many layers of these heads were below Gunther, and the probability of success was extremely low, so he needed to find a backup option. Suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by a vampire who suddenly appeared from the darkness, saying that no one could reach him, and he would destroy Gunther. Many heads began to appear, expressing different people saying that the devilish forces must disappear and should not be given up on them. Strange things continued to happen, and Bengal revealed his true body, saying about his head that this man was an ardent fighter against vampires, but now he is only part of his collection. Gunther told him that he had noticed a small child in his world and asked if he was keeping it here so that it would grow up, gain strength, and become part of his collection. Bengal replied that of all the heroes who have ever fought for humanity and sacrificed themselves, he chooses the most beautiful ones. Bengal said that the exalted souls of these heroes would not grow old here until the end of the human race, and asked if this was not a wonderful hell for them. Bengal that his face would not be suitable for collecting, but he replied that he should not worry. Bengal said that Gunther's actions surpass all the heroes of recent years so he should not refuse this opportunity. Gunther told him that it was not that at all, but that he was not so handsome and he was not suitable for Bengal, and told him to check it out if he did not believe him. Bengal took off his mask and saw his face, calling him a monster, and Gunther said that he always hears this from the same monster standing in front of him. Gunther asked if he was free after this, but Bengal said that he would not be able to get out of this place, being in an immobilized position. Gunther said that he himself just thought so, but Bengal himself gave him the opportunity to escape, and he added that he was not the only one with teeth, bearing his jaw, saying that he could get out. Gunther started biting and tearing off heads around him, and Bengal said that he couldn't get out even if he knew how to bite. Having said that from this beautiful hell, the place where his collection is kept, no one has ever been able to escape or leave alive. Bengal pointed to the wall of faces. However, these words of Bengal did not stop Gunther who continued to free himself from his bonds, and Gunther said that he was not just anyone, but the great Gunther himself, saying that no matter how difficult the journey was, he could still survive until the end. Gunther continued to fight and free himself from the vampire's heads. Bengal listened to all these words, and decided not to watch Gunther, disappearing into the mass of human faces and heads, and from the outside, Rhino and Arian watched this. They decided that Gunther was stuck there, and Rhino grabbed his head, saying that he should not have believed that man and made a knight out of the corpse, hoping for him to save humanity. At that moment, Arian pointed to a pile of heads, and Gunther suddenly burst out of there, breaking this living wall, and Rhino screamed that he believed in him all this time. Gunther did not pay attention to this, as he was busy fighting, and he landed on the floor of the catacombs, but immediately rushed away because a new mass of faces and heads had already hit there. Gunther flew to Arian and Reino, but was already without artificial legs, and said that they needed to change the plan, because they could not win in close combat. Gunther, being without two legs, threw Arian on his back and said that their plan was to run away from the vampire until dawn came. The battle between them continued, and Bengal again attacked the people with his piles of faces, but Gunther, with the help of the momentum from the strength of his arms, evaded his attacks. Arian, being on his back, said that she had several limbs in stock, and a couple of modified weapons that she did not talk about. Gunther replied that they did not have time to install them, so he ordered her to hold tight, because now they need to move away from Bengal. Gunther pushed himself off the ground with his hands again, flying further away from his opponent, but one of Bengal's heads noticed a girl on his back who had a beautiful face. The thousands and hundreds of Bengal heads that he had been collecting for a long time were now almost all focused on capturing the beautiful girl on Gunther's back. Gunther hid with Arian behind a pillar supporting the catacombs and said that the vampire was interested in her, but asked how much time was left until dawn. Gunther looked at the entrance, and hearing that there were about five minutes left, said that they needed to hold out a little longer because it was already beginning to dawn outside. But suddenly he, together with Arian, heard a plaintive cry, and saw that a pile of Bengal's heads attacked Reino, who screamed, and he asked for help and the salvation of Gunther. Gunther remained where he was, saying that he knew Rhino would be captured, but added that there would be casualties, and as long as they distracted the vampire, he would be able to leave safely. Gunther said that all this was necessary for the sake of saving humanity and exchanged glances with Arian, 
but she decided not to sit and wait for Rhino's death. So she came out of hiding and announced her location to Bengal. Arian allowed the vampire to approach her, and a mass of heads and faces rushed to attack her at that very second, but Gunther managed to save her again with the help of an impulse from his hands. Gunther told her that she should have listened to him and stayed still, but Arian said that she would save people anyway if she got the chance. Already on the fly, Gunther told the girl that he was dying of fatigue, so he would fly directly to the exit, and he rushed there, pushing off with his hands. Bendel almost managed to bite Gunther on the leg with his heads, but he made his way to the stairs outside, pushing off with his hands so that Arian was flattened on his back. Bendel continued to follow them, and one of the nearby heads spoke as he walked, saying that he was touched by the knight's courage, so he asked him to become part of the collection. Moving up the circular staircase at a frantic pace, they tried to escape from the higher vampire and suddenly they saw a light coming from the street. Gunther was about to make a final push with his right hand towards the exit, but Bendel's head grabbed it, stopping him and Arian from escaping. However, Gunther was not going to give up so easily, so he told Bendel to fuck off, after which he broke off his right arm and rushed to the exit again. Gunther flew out of the exit and saw a city in front of him, shrouded in the rising sun, and he shouted that everything worked out, but Arian suddenly called him from behind. Arian screamed because she flew off Gunther's back and ended up in the mouth of Bengal, who managed to grab her from the shadows with his heads. Bengal dragged her back with his faces and heads, saying that she had finally fallen into his hands, and Gunther screamed in disappointment and powerlessness. Bengal returned to his lair, not far from the catacombs, and along the way to him, heads and faces were scattered, they were burning in fire due to the sunlight they came under. Bendel's body had already almost completely regenerated, and he said that revenge for his family had failed because of the monstrous night created by people. His subordinates, the lesser vampires, said that they would always consider Mr. Bendel as their family, and they would avenge their fallen comrades. Many faces from Bendel's body were distorted with anger, and they told the vampires that they could not cope with the night so he would deal with him himself. One person said that he could handle Gunther himself, but the second added that for this he needed even more people, and this was an order to the lower vampires. After some time, the lower vampires came to Bengal and announced that they had brought thirty-four people with the most beautiful faces in the area. The two vampires were bragging about who had brought which people, and Bengal suddenly spoke up, praising them for their good work, and the people turned their undivided attention to the mass of heads above. However, Bendel quickly lost interest in the newcomers, turning his attention to Arian, and said that, as expected, he liked her face the most. Bendel approached her and told her not to be afraid, because she would simply unite with his body, and they would be together until the end of the era of people. At this time, Gunther shouted at Reino, telling him to quickly attach the limbs, but he replied that his screams only made him work slower. Gunther said that he couldn't help but scream because he had just under half the energy left to move, checking his vitality meter. Arian's energy if he created another person with the same blood, hoping to survive without her. However, Rhino asked him in response that if such a thing was possible, was he going to save Arian? And Gunther replied that he would have to think about it later. Rhino thought for a while, continuing his work, and said that this was most likely impossible because no one except Arian was capable of this. Rhino said that the device in Gunther's head doesn't just resurrect his corpse, it allows his body to consciously move for a period of time. Rhino added that a decomposed corpse could no longer be fully revived, and without replenishing vital energy, his body would last a maximum of three days. Gunther asked again, saying that Rhino said that if his body lay there for three days, then it could no longer be revived and Reino confirmed his words. Rhino said that it doesn't matter whether he is in danger or not, if the body is not refueled for more than three days, then it can no longer be revived, and this is Gunther's main weakness. Finishing the thought, Rhino said that Gunther would need to save Arian and return back before his body completely rotted, otherwise it would all be over. But he mentioned that creating a new power supply would be impossible for the next couple of years. So without Arian, Gunther would definitely die forever. Gunther said that he did not completely believe Reino, but he replied that he could not say anything more, but he would think about it when there was more trust between them. Reino said he was done after a while and Gunther finally stood up, but suddenly asked what he should do with his right arm, which was missing. Reino remembered his right hand and told Gunther that he made it a little special, 
because Bengal was very difficult to fight in close combat. This weapon was not yet finished, because he was just developing it, but it was created specifically for long-range combat with strong opponents. Reno S. Mast subordinate brought a huge box and pulled out a weapon from it, and Gunther at first didn't understand what it was, but then he realized it and was pleasantly surprised. Meanwhile, in Bendel's hideout, a man stood in the face of death, shedding tears and begging for mercy, but a vampire standing nearby ordered him to stop. Bendel, who showed his true part of the body in front of the man, told the man that he would do everything quickly and it would not hurt, so he should calm down. Having injured his hand, he used blood to touch the man's face, covering his face in blood, and told him that his main weapon was his blood. Bengal wrapped the man's head up to his neck, then cut it off, and created a new face from it for his collection, and said that his mind was subject to his will. The rest of the crowd of people screamed in fear seeing this, and Bengal turned his attention to Arian, saying that it was her turn, but she stood confidently and did not move. Bengal smiled with two faces at the same time, and after that he told Arian that now they and she would become one just like this man. Bengal approached her and said that she has great resilience, because her eyes express strength and determination even now, and he especially likes this. Bengal said that he had seen such eyes fill with realization, but Arian said that what scared her most was that no one had tried to save his heart yet. The vampire was silent for a second, but then said that her words were interesting, and he would make sure that her face and his body always repeated this phrase. However, at that moment, a man attacked Bengal, holding a spear in his hands and saying that he was waiting for him to be distracted, calling the vampire an enemy of humanity. His weapon was close to piercing the heart of the vampire's true body, but the man was immediately pressed against the wall by a pile of faces and heads, not having time to finish the attack. At this time, the lower vampire apologized to the master, because it was he who brought him, but Bengal said that this was not his fault and this was an isolated case. The man said that he is not the only one, and someday a hero will come who will tear out his black heart, because such is the unquenchable will of all humanity. Bengal called him cool and said that it is always funny to meet such a great hero like him, and the man did not understand at all what the vampire wanted to tell him. Bengal said that his disgusting and vain beliefs that he deserves to die for the sake of humanity amuse him terribly. The man clenched his jaw in anger, but was able to say that he was ashamed that someone like him was amused by his beliefs, and Bendel approached him. The high vampire showed the man his hand and said that it became like this because during his life as a man he saved people stuck there from a burning house. Bendel said he still remembers that day, the smell of smoke filling his lungs and the feeling of burning flesh as he tried to save at least one more person. Bendel asked the man if he knew what he ultimately received in return and said that in addition to heroic glory and respect for the first time, he received something more, forever. Bendel said that there was contempt and disappointment in the eyes of the people who saw him, but the man did not believe it, saying that it could not be true. The man said that this couldn't happen just like that, but the vampire revealed his face, what he was hiding, and revealed his burnt face, saying that it was all because of him. The man showed a look of shock on his face and the vampire said that everyone who thought he was a hero when they saw his face looked the same, shunning him and expressing contempt. Bendel said that all the people hated him, and from that moment his place in the world disappeared, because people did not want to see a monster like him anywhere. Bendel began to shout, saying that it was his fault that everything turned out this way, even though he saved people by sacrificing himself, and in the end he received nothing but hatred. The high vampire calmed down, covering his face again and said that this man's sacrifice for everyone might be in vain, and might even harm him. The man did not find any arguments, so he said that no matter what happened in his past, there is no justification for the actions of the vampire, he is the most common killer. Bengal told the man, thinking that someday he would understand that all our sincere deeds, done for the good, do not matter. Bengal was about to touch the man's face but suddenly he heard a familiar voice that told him to stop talking about this nonsense, and his hand was pierced by something with great speed. This someone was Gunther, with a huge weapon on his right hand, and he said that this gun was moving back and forth, but Rhino replied that it was not finished yet. Arian screamed with joy, but Gunther was surprised that she was still alive, and said that otherwise he would have killed her himself, and Bendel drew attention to him. Bendel called Gunther a bastard, 
and said that he wanted to die so badly that he came all the way here again. But he replied that it was just the opposite. Gunther said that he didn't have time, so he suggested that he start the second round, and added that it would last until one of them died. Some time ago, Rhino said that he didn't bother much, so he called the weapon a bone thrower. It was one of the modifications for Gunther's body. This bone thrower was made from bison shin muscles and spine spines, also surrounded by muscles, adding even more power. These muscles are needed here to retract and push out the spikes. They slowly contract, accumulating force, and then shoot the spike at great speed. The destructive power and speed of this weapon are tens and hundreds of times stronger than the power and speed of all crossbows and ballistae created and used by people. Bone launcher's barrel itself is short, but it takes time to contract all the muscles to attack, and has the disadvantage that once all the spikes are used, the weapon becomes useless junk. Coming back to reality, Gunther said that it was certainly a disadvantage, but he would just have to stay away from Bendel in order to defeat him. Reino, riding on a horse, told him that even if time was running out in the battle, Gunther must have time to kill Bendel, for the sake of all mankind. Reino said that it is impossible to save Arian now, because even if they can escape from Bendel into the sun, they will be pursued by lesser vampires. He added that Gunther's body cannot be charged while he is active, and if he does not have time to kill Bendel and is discharged, then the lesser vampires will destroy them all. Rhino explained that the lower vampires will disappear all at once when the higher vampire whose blood flows into them disappears, and Gunther only needs to kill Bengal. Rhino said that they wouldn't do it that fast, and they might not make it in time, but Gunther suddenly pushed off with his legs, speeding up, and said that he didn't want to die. Gunther, being in Bengal's lair, thought that it was not so difficult to get here, but he had little time left, less than fifteen minutes. However, he did not give up and said out loud that during this time he would certainly have time to scare him to death, and tense the muscles in his bone thrower on his right hand. Bengal asked if that disgusting thing that shoots bones was a weapon, and told Gunther that he had brought such an amazing thing for the fight. Bengal began to wrap himself in his body, and told him that no throwing weapon could penetrate his human shield, consisting of people's faces and heads. At that same second, Gunther fired from a bone thrower piercing right through the shield, but immediately cursed, saying that he missed again, but at least he understood how to shoot, and next time it would hit him right in the heart. Bengal ordered the lesser vampires to carry away all the faces, but they refused, saying that they were faster, so they would protect their master, and he agreed. The vampires rushed to attack Gunther, telling him to be careful with his strange weapon but he was prepared for this and said that there was no need to use it on them. He killed the first vampire after a direct confrontation, but did not have time to react to an attack from behind from the second vampire, and he slowed down his movements. The second vampire shouted that their will was strong as steel, squeezing Gunther with all his might, and added that they would not break under his stern gaze. Saying that his strength would not be enough for this, Gunther, with his free left hand, squeezed the head of the vampire hanging on his back freeing himself from him. Using his two legs, Gunther jumped from where he was standing as Bengal attacked him in a split second, and the vampires screamed to tie his legs to prevent him from running away. Gunther turned to face the vampires and destroyed one of them in one blow, saying that they were only fanatics and bastards, and continued to defend himself from them. Gunther continued to destroy the vampires one by one, and said that their lives were worthless, but after these words— the vampire lying on the ground suddenly grabbed his leg. The vampire said that no one treated them as people because of their appearance. And since then, all that matters to them all is the life of their master, the vampire Bengal. Gunther froze in place from such suddenness, but suddenly felt danger and realized that Bengal took advantage of the moment and bit Gunther's head. Bengal praised the vampires for their good work and told Gunther that he had good teeth and would now chew him up, starting from the head. Bengal began to absorb Gunther's head, but he decided not to hesitate, so he raised his right hand and fired a bone thrower, destroying a mass of faces. Gunther suddenly began to run away, because in the place where he stood, Bengal had already struck with his heads, and the knight thought that he only had three charges left, so he needed to be more careful. However, he wondered how to find out where Bengal's true body is hidden behind all these faces, because they all look exactly the same. Gunther was thinking about what to do, when suddenly he heard Arian, standing nearby, screaming Bengal's name, trying to bring him outside. The lesser vampire grabbed Arian and told her to be quiet, 
but the other vampire told the vampire to be careful with her, because the master himself had chosen her. Gunther wondered what actually happened there, but suddenly the vampire took advantage of the moment and attacked him, but Gunther immediately nailed him, destroying his heart. Gunther dodged Bengal's attack again, and Arian continued to call out to the vampire, as if recognizing something, and when Gunther noticed something, the vampire shut Arian up. Arian screamed again, but already said that Bendel was a disgusting monster, and some heads immediately wrinkled with anger, but she was forced to remain silent. These faces told her that she was just stalling for time, and Arian turned to Gunther, saying that there were several faces that were the first to react and begin to move. She said that these heads were most likely closer to Bendel than the others, but the vampire shut her up, saying that she was taking advantage of Bengal's leniency. However, the vampire's speech about how he would tear out her tongue was interrupted by a shot from Gunther's bone thrower, which suddenly rang out unexpectedly for everyone. Gunther said that he aimed precisely at the person who first reacted to Arian's words, and the spike hit Bengal almost in the head, which confirmed their theory. Bengal became worried and said that if Gunther could not hit the first time, then it would be all over for him, because he could hide in another person. However, Bengal realized that Gunther had cut off the nerves connecting him to his faces, slowing down his movement, and thought that they needed to be healed faster. Gunther did not wait, saying that he would not allow Bengal to heal, and used the penultimate shot, hitting him in the arm and depriving him of the ability to move. While Bengal was thinking about how to recover quickly, Gunther was about to strike the final blow, but he was stopped by the lower vampires. All the vampires attacked him in a crowd, blocking his view. But Gunther fired the last shot, clearing the way for himself with his weapon. Bengal did not expect this attack, and the shot hit him directly in the head, depriving him of the ability to think, but it did not destroy his heart, which meant defeat. Arian realized that this was a failure, and shouted to Gunther that if he didn't have time, even the device in his head would be destroyed. But Gunther, being surrounded by lesser vampires, said that he was not satisfied with failure, and he began to destroy all the vampires around him, saying that there were only a couple of steps left to victory, and he was so close that this last step remained to be taken. Gunther rushed forward from the crowd of vampires. Gunther had less than ten seconds of energy left and was approaching Bengal, intending to finish him off, but he managed to restore one eye. Bengal's memories, he appeared in the form of a man, saying that he had joined the civil guard, considering saving people the most important thing. This young and ambitious guy said that he, like his father, wants to become a hero and protect all of humanity, sacrificing himself for its good. However, that fire in his eyes disappeared when the fire incident happened, and this guy became the laughing stock of everyone because of his burned face. Even the children, seeing him, threw stones at him, shouting for this monster to get away from them because he looks disgusting. This guy with a terrible face cried tears of blood, asking his father, as if he were alive, if his sacrifice for humanity was worth anything, asking himself if his sacrifice was worth the fact that he was now being called a monster because of his appearance. He realized that he did not know what he should believe. However, at that moment, when Bendel finally despaired, a vampire named Julius extended his hand to him saying that he had been watching him for a long time. This purebred vampire said that he wants to build a new world, and for this he needs people like him, but the process will be long and difficult. Bengal asked what kind of world he wanted to build, and Julius answered what made the guy with the burned face accept a helping hand from a pure-blood vampire. Returning to reality, Gunther pierced Bengal's heart with his hand, saying that this time he had won completely and he asked him. Bengal said that he wanted to become a hero that everyone needed, and lastly asked Gunther if a monster like him could become such a hero. Flying down, when Bengal had almost disappeared, Gunther answered him that of course he could, and after that he lost consciousness from lack of energy. While in the wagon, several days later, Gunther opened his eye, and everyone around him screamed with joy that Gunther was able to wake up again. He stood up, and suddenly his head was pulled back and Arian said that now he was recharging, so he shouldn't make sudden movements. Arian said that he was great, because thanks to him, many people were saved, and Rhino said that he did not expect that he would defeat the high vampire so quickly. Having learned that the lower vampires had disappeared after killing the higher one, Gunther asked whether it was possible to deal with all of this faster if he killed the pure blood right away. Arian said that the last pure blood vampire, Julius, 
had not been seen since he killed the emperor, and Gunther was surprised by this. Arian explained that although pure bloods are the strongest, Julius never takes part in battles, and no one knows why. But Gunther thought about it, and said that there was something else strange, and asked if it was right that all vampires feed on human blood. But at the same time, vampires want to destroy all people, which does not coincide with their need, and Rhino said that this also alarmed them. Arian said that in order to study this issue in more detail, they needed to get to the main headquarters, and Gunther was surprised that there was still a whole city left. Rhino confirmed this, saying that there was only one such city left, and all the survivors were gathering on this land untouched by the war. Arian added that in this place they create spare parts for Gunther's body, and this city is the last stronghold of humanity, untouched for a hundred years. Gunther thought about their words, but suddenly Reino looked out the window and said that they were now approaching him and would soon be able to see him. Reino said that this was sacred land, where a counterattack against the vampires was being prepared, but suddenly in the window they saw Bahal blazing on fire. Both Arian and Rhino were both shocked and Gunther chuckled and grinned and said that humanity's last hope was burning with a bright flame. At that moment, among the upper-class vampires, someone said that Bendel had died, and one of the vampires jumped up in shock, starting to scream paranoidly in fear. In fear of the approaching enemy, the white-haired vampire began to cry, but he was calmed by the huge vampire behind him, saying that everything was fine and there were no enemies here. This huge vampire, whose face was not visible, said that Bengal was beautiful, but not reliable, and asked which of the people could kill him. Julius, to whom the question was addressed, ordered the vampire behind him, who was hiding in the shadows, to find out the details of his death, and he obediently disappeared. Returning to the heroes, Bahal is called the Sacred Land for a reason, and one of the reasons is its ideal geographical location. The city is surrounded by huge mountains on the mainland side, which made it difficult for him to trade, which is why he is not rich, but he has a lot of fertile land with which he feeds himself. The city also stands on a cliff, which means it is impossible to get to it from the sea, and the only option left is to get there via a kilometer-long bridge. Bahal became famous as a sacred land created by God that will never fall, thanks to this bridge that helps in defense. Gunther, Arian and Reno looked at the fallen city of Bahal, which was all in flames, and Gunther said that it turned out that it had fallen after all. Suddenly Rhino met his friend, Leonard, and they said hello, while Leonard said that he was worried about him, because news takes a long time to reach. Leonard blushed when Arian told him that thanks to his prayers she was able to return alive and called him wealth. He asked to be called Leonard and said he was glad she was okay, but turned his attention to Gunther. Leonard looked at the fact that he was stealing the life force from Arian, but Rhino decided to introduce him saying that he was in charge of protecting the walls of Bahal. Leonard Welf told them that they had come a long way, so they should go inside, because the fire had already been put out and everything was in order. Leonard explained that the defenses at the beginning of the bridge had fallen and the city was now destroyed, and Rhino asked why this was happening since Bengal was already dead. Leonard, dishevelledly, asked if they had killed Bengal, and after Gunther said that he took care of it, Leonard again looked away and his face fell. After the fall of humans on the continent at the bridge, vampires began to occupy Bahal, and Arian asked which of the higher vampires was here. Leonard said that until now no one had seen this vampire. He was very different from those that Leonard Welf had seen up to this point. Leonard said he had a strange twisted figure and costume, and he put on a show where all the fighters died. Gunther said that if it was a circus-type show, it would be funny. But Leonard replied that if he had been there, he wouldn't have found it so funny. Rhino asked if they finally made it through, and Leonard said that at first they were able to hold them off, but the second time they did a lot of damage. Leonard told Gunther that he needed him to stay here and guard the bridge, but Gunther said that he was refusing it. Gunther replied that this was because he had a better chance of surviving if they first became a human shield, and then retreated to the rear. Leonard looked at him hopefully at first, but now he called Gunther a cynical bastard and asked if he knew how he ended up here. Leonard said that 136 of his fellow soldiers died trying to become dead knights. Dozens of researchers created his body. He said that while they were defending the sacred land of Bahal, risking their lives, he was standing here for that reason only. Disappointed that the will of all these people was inherited by Gunther, who only values his own life, Leonard shouted that he himself should have become the dead knight. Gunther called him cool and kind-hearted, 
and said that every time such people say something similar to him when they meet. Gunther left Arian and walked up to Leonard, after which, adjusting his jaw, he sent him to hell, answering all his words before. At first, Leonard Welf expected his jaw to grind in anger, and his teeth ground, and he rushed to attack Gunther, drawing his sword from the sheath on his belt. Leonard rushed at him, but at the same second flew out of the building, breaking through its wall and the knights who were on the street thought that their captain had already died. Gunther was frozen in a strike pose, looking at Leonard on the street, and Arian told him not to make any sudden movements while he was charging. Arian wanted to tell him everything, but Gunther was the first to say that it was only self-defense, because Leonard attacked him first. After some time, Leonard returned, but with a bandaged neck and left arm, and Gunther said that he was sorry that the three-point shot did not work out. However, Arian told him that no matter how strong he was, a person cannot win this war alone, because creating his body parts requires a lot of strength and resources. Timely delivery of his modified body parts is important, otherwise his body will rot and cannot be used. Arian, concluding her first thought, said that for this reason the sacred land of Bahal and the people must be protected so that the supply does not stop. Arian told him that Gunther should become this defender, because this would increase the chances of victory and Gunther asked them to bring him a new weapon. Rhino, who was standing nearby, said that they only had a couple of such weapons, and he took out a strange hand with a mouth at the end and a diamond-shaped shield, placing it in front of him. Gunther became indignant, saying that he thought Rhino was joking that there were only two of them, and Arian asked how that happened, since they originally cooked more. Leonard apologized for this, saying that almost all of their forces were focused on firefighting and defense and there was no time left to make weapons. Gunther suggested that if they were short on time, they could make him a normal hand instead of this wire cutter, and he showed Leonard the modified hand. Leonard asked him to repeat himself, explaining that this weapon bites with enormous, inhuman force, but Gunther looked away in disappointment. Gunther did not try the weapon, calling it a wall decoration, and tried out a diamond-shaped shield, wearing it on his right hand for protection. Having reduced it to its previous size on his hand, Gunther said that this thing like an aegis is very useful, and Arian said that it is a shell shield. Arian explained that its size can be changed at will, and it is also stronger than regular steel shields and resistant to fire attacks. Gunther asked if she could make something like the bone launcher he was using, and added that despite the number of shots, the weapon worked for him. Arian said that this could take more than six months, because any type of weapon requires a lot of resources, and they are all disposable unlike limbs. Gunther said that in this case nothing worthwhile should be expected, and Arian replied that in such an environment it would be difficult to purchase all the necessary materials. However, their conversation was interrupted by Leonard, saying that he needed to go get a report to the patrol officers, and Rhino also left, saying that he also needed to leave on a personal matter. Telling them to have a good time, the two left, and Arian continued to recharge Gunther for the upcoming battles. Gunther tried out the new sword, twirling it in the air and finding its center of gravity, and said that this sword was good, so now it was finally ready for battle. Arian ignored him, reading the book, but when Gunther turned away, she called him and said that she wanted to talk about the words of Leonard Welf. Arian said that the choice of the dead knight was carried out among a hundred ordinary workers, representatives of the royal family and nobility and in the end they decided that Gunther was the most suitable. Arian became serious, and said that Gunther does not need to become different and change, because she believes that he can save the whole world and humanity. Gunther said that he didn't even worry about it, but suddenly mentioned that 136 people died in an attempt to become a charger for the dead knight. Gunther asked her why she decided to become a recharge device even in such conditions, despite the failures of everyone who tried before her. Arian thought about it, and said that someone had to do it, and Gunther told her that he would never be able to understand these words of hers. After some time, the two of them stood in the room when Leonard walked through the door and shouted to Gunther to get ready, announcing that the enemies had already arrived. Standing in front of the bridge, Gunther disconnected the charger from his head and put on the helmet from his armor, and Arian asked him to be sure to survive this time. Gunther began to move across the bridge and unsheathed his sword, saying that whoever it was, he would tear the enemy apart, no matter what. As soon as he set foot on the mainland, Gunther felt a presence in the forest, and the vampire told him that he was sorry that today's viewer was only one person.